most of the physics students here know a bit about Schrodinger's cat, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to that example uh, later, but the, the cartoon, uh, it, it, you know, is related to that. And basically, the, uh, you know, the idea is that in principle, quantum mechanics could realize a situation where a cat is both dead and alive at the same time. Anyway, that's, I will, I'll come to that a little later. Uh, so what I, well, just to summarize, I'll say why quantum computers are interesting. And I will we'll talk about then a little bit about Schroding, uh, superposition and the idea of Schrodinger's cat uh, and how it's related to uh, experiments on quantum computing. And, and it's, towards the end, I'll try to draw this analogy for what quantum computers could do to Schrodinger's cat example. And uh, what I'm going to use here, uh, talk about here, is I use that our group uses uh, ionized atoms, uh, ions, and we hold them in what we call a trap. And those, the, the quantum states are the, of the internal states of the ions are the, the quantum bits that we play with. So just to motivate a little bit, the one way of thinking about why we're heading towards quantum computers is uh, there's, a, there's a trend called Moore's Law. There's certainly not a, a rigid law, but basically it's a trend where, as you can see, that line going up is meant to, is to represent roughly the number of transistors on a microprocessor trip, chip. And uh, the trend is such that uh, if we extrapolate this, this curve out, to this uh, plot out to present day, uh, we get to the situation where the, you know, the density of, of, of fundamental logic gates is so, are so, is so high that we have to, you know, we have to start worrying about quantum effects of the components of the, of the, of the, of the, of the chips. And just to just give an idea of, uh, you know, we, us, us atomic or, or quantum physics people talk about superpositions. And just to try to give you a flavor for what that's about, I, I like this example here where if you consider the box uh, up in the upper right, the, the, uh, it, there, there's, you tend to see, at certain times you tend to see one face in the foreground and other times you see uh, uh, one of the other faces being in the foreground. So these are the two images, and if you stare at the upper right fact, you know, figure, sometimes it looks like the, the you know, the, the forward faces uh, and the, uh, the place labeled A there, and otherwise, other times see the other face being a, I think this is a good, uh, you know, good illustration that it, of, a, of a quantum superposition state is that actually, in some sense, it exists in two states at the same time. Uh, and in fact, when we measure our quantum bits, uh, we tend to, it's like we tend to see one orientation of the, of the, of the box one way or the other. Uh, okay, that's what I just said, and I, I'll say a little bit about, more about that now. Um, so anyway, one, one way to see why, you know, quantum sounds in, would be interesting for computers is just to think about uh, how, 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 how information scales, and so uh, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see uh, the second line there as we, we, we tend to write, uh, you know, our quantum bits, qubits for short, uh, as these superposition states. So in some sense, the, 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 the bit can be both a zero and a one at the same time. And for the physics students out there, we know that the, that, that the, uh, the, the probabilities of being, when we measure the bit of being zero, one is given by these coefficients alpha zero and alpha one, the absolute value is squared. And of course, the, you know, the prob total probability of making a, measuring either one has to be equal to one. Uh, so we, if we, what's interesting though, is we consider how, uh, you know, our, me our quantum memory scales. So uh, let's take an uh, example of, of three quantum bits. And uh, the, the line there basically is a, it, it, it's a, a general superposition is similar to what I showed in the upper right, but now we have to consider uh, all possible states that the that the that the that these three quantum bits can be simultaneously. And so, uh, anyway, if we consider how this scales, uh, for 300 quantum bits, that could store 
two to the 300 or roughly 10 to the 90th numbers simultaneously. And this is if we took all the matter in the universe and made a, 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 a classical memory, uh, it would take, it, we, we couldn't store uh, the, you know, the numbers that we can in the, in the superposition state in our, in our devices. And in fact, it turns out that one, one of the easy thing for us to do is actually make this superposition state of 300 qubits. The, the trick is to how, how we can get it to do something useful. And so that's, I'll try to give you an idea of sort of the steps we're taking to try to realize that. Uh, so one thing, one thing about this is, is that when we, if we say this just in this eight bit, uh, uh, pardon me, three qubit system, uh, it turns out when we, if we change the, if we flip one of the bits, let's say, in general, all of the coefficients there are going to be different. So in some sense, we're operating on all, all eight uh, numbers simultaneously uh, in, in the superposition sense. Uh, anyway, but we have to remember, even it, even in this complicated register for eight uh, eight cube, or pardon me, three quantum bits, the when we do the final measurement, that the, the system will collapse down to one of these possible states uh, with the probability given by those coefficients, uh, uh, absolute value squared. Okay. Well, so this is a restriction we have to live in, but uh, in, anyway, early, in, in the, roughly in the mid-1990s, uh, Peter Schur, a quantum, uh, or, or rather, a, a computer theorist, was, uh, came up with the idea uh, of this, this quantum computer. And I'll, I won't be able to describe this algorithm. It involves number theory and a lot of heavy quantum mechanics. But the, but the, the takeaway is that uh, using this simple uh, you know notions that I've described just for three qubits. We uh, he, he can he he was able to he devised an algorithm that would enable the factorization of, of large numbers. And uh, well, anyway, before I start giving you the details, actually the reason the the reason the this factoring algorithm is as important as I think maybe many of you know that the. The, the common encryption schemes like RSA, the, labeled after the three, uh, the first initials of the three offers that invented this algorithm, uh, they, 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 they showed that they showed that the, the, uh, an algorithm for encryption that derived its security from the inability to factorize large numbers. So just, uh, you know, to, keep, to compare the classical case. So it, it may not be the most efficient way of doing uh, classical computation, uh, but in fact, you can do any, com any computation on a classical computer with a, com a combination of two, two logic gates. One is just a bit flip, and the other is a, a, a NAND gate I write there, but it, there's other two, two, two bit gates that work. Uh, they, in the classical world, and as I say, this then would, with just a combination of these two gates, that we could we could do any any computation on a on a classical computer. So for the quantum world, we think about uh, this gets into uh, with some well useful to have some pictures. So that I think the physics students will know that. So when we're talking about an electron, an electron has a, a spin one half, we say, but in a magnetic field, it can it can uh, exists in a state where the spin, uh, we, angle momentum basically, uh, is pointed up or pointed down. So we have those two possible states. But, in, but we can also actually change, uh, uh, you know, a, a, say a, a bit in, a, in the zero state or the spin down electron state into a superposition. And that's what this, oops, yeah. oh, I, I vaguely see my pointer, but <laughs> anyway. So it's that first line in that in that bottom uh, rectangle. Uh, we can make a take a zero uh, quantum bit and then make a superposition state out characterized by these these coefficients. Uh, they're, they're written that way just because of the normalization is is e easy to take care of. So anyway, the and then the other thing we need is a non-trivial logic gate, and so this is one that's used and. In fact, it's equivalent with the rotations. It's equivalent to any other possible two qubit gates you might think about. And so the, the, the truth table for this 
this uh, so-called pi phase gate is, it doesn't look so interesting in, in, for a classical computer uh, because basically you can see the truth table at the bottom right. All it does is it leaves the three of the states alone but puts a minus sign in front of the uh, of this uh, this state that for both uh, 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 both qubits are in the one state, and the reason that's important is what we're, the way the an element of the quantum computer is that we're going to interfering interfering these quantum states, and so this 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 phase factor this this minus one becomes important. So just to get, and and just to give you an idea, if we apply this this simple phase gate to uh, to the a state where it's an equal superposition of, uh, of the two states of two qubits, uh, the product of those states. If we apply this gate on the lower right, we re end up with a state that looks like the second line in the, in the orange rectangle there. And it turns out we can no longer write the, 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 the states as the, the state as the sep uh, separate entities of the qubits are what we call entanglement. And maybe some of you know that in the last, uh, I think it was three years ago now that the, the Nobel Prizes were awarded to scientists who uh, were able to verify the, the, the features of the, the so-called entanglement where, uh, where we, can't, we can't separate the systems as we can for classical bits. Anyway, so this is Peter Shore who invented the, this factoring algorithm. Uh, and I won't, I won't uh, as I say, some people, this is, a, this is a, a part, of, a big part of you know, classes that people take on quantum, uh, quantum uh, computations, but I can try to give you a flavor. Uh, so anyway, the, the, as I said, the, the reason this was so important was that, that it would complicate, uh, compromise the security of common encryption systems, in particular RSA. And, uh, so anyway, just to give that flavor then, where the, the idea of his, his quantum computer is basically we'll have a, a register that holds a, a superposition of all possible numbers. So I give an example for the, the, you know, the case of three quantum bits, and I show the state on the right, upper right there under, underneath the picture of Peter Shore. And so that, in that case, it's an equal superposition of all possible states of the of this three qubit system we have and then in general the way the algorithm works is just a, a series of of operations the the qubit two qubit gate that i described and then the ro so-called rotation the single bit uh, uh operations i mentioned and so the in, in some sense that the, these operations are are coherent and one one actually a good example of the, uh, of to give a flavor of how this works is that uh, many, many of us in our early days in, in, in science classes, there was an, there was an experiment called, uh, it, was, uh, a water, it was done with water waves. So on the left coming in, the picture is chopped off, but you have a, you have a, a wave, you know, just a, a, a water coming in and hitting that, that red screen. And for the most part, it, the wave bounces back and creates a so-called standing wave uh, on, that's shown on the left of the red barrier. But so we let some of the, once some of the a bit of the waves propagate through these slits, uh, what we have is a situation where the, uh, there's uh, in the in the well, I wish I had a pointer, but anyway, you can see that as on the right that there's places where you still see these the waves, but in, in between the these patterns of waves that there's null, and that that represents the the quantum interference that uh, that we have with our quantum bits. So anyway, the uh, and just to give you just an overview of what happens, but with going in any details, the 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 basically what we do if we want to factorize a n bit quantum number, we need a register that that it can hold that number and the quantum superposition of that, of all the digits of that number. And then what we do is we just uh, uh, operate with a series of the single and two qubit uh, operations that I briefly described before. And then we finally uh, will measure the, this quantum superposition and the, it, the, the, at the output then the, 
you know, the, our superposition state will collapse into single uh, classical number. Uh, and, and then it turns out that uh, and with uh, number theory and so on, that, that Peter Shore uh, was well aware of, he, he, he was able to derive the, uh, or show that we, you know, from that number that the final number that's measured, we could, we could use a classical algorithm to get the, the factors that, the, of the, that we need. And, and so this is, the, this is why this would, if, if we can realize this machine, it would be important for the security of, uh, of, of crypto systems, particularly ones that use the RSA, which is the most common one. So anyway, but to give an idea about uh, what we need to do to just to, to factorize a 150 digit decimal number takes about 10 to the nine, about a billion of these operations. And the problem is they aren't perfect. And so we, that's one of the things we have to, we have to deal with as we progress in this, in this business. So anyway, now just to take a little detour, talking about Schrodinger's cat and uh, this was a, a, a famous example, in part because Schrodinger was really the kind of the, one of the main inventors of quantum quantum uh, theory, and not you know we certainly other people were thinking about it too. But he had, he laid out a, a basic scheme for quantum mechanics that it turns out is still useful today. In our our experiments, the 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 energies of the system are fairly low, and so we don't the, it. If the if the energies were very high, we have to we have to take care of uh, of, of relativistic effects, and so it gets very complicated. But in in, in our case, we we can actually uh, make you know in principle make these registers and, and work with them just using this the the, the regional theory of, of of Schrodinger. Actually, Schrodinger being the you know the inventor of quantum mechanics, I mean. He was bothered by it, and basically, he had, there's this quote here. He said in 1952, towards the end of his career, we never experimented with just one electron atom or molecule. We, in thought experiments, we sometimes assume that we do, but this invariably relates to ridiculous consequences, meaning his cat. And uh, uh, we haven't we haven't been able to make Schrodinger's cat, um, nor would we want to. But I'll give an example later that would 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 uh, mimic Schrodinger's cat. But anyway, you know, with experiments we do, particularly with with uh, charged atoms, atomic atomic ions, and neutral atoms, and there's there's other platforms too. But with those two systems, we can uh, we can carry out these basic elements of of quantum computing. Uh, but the, the key thing is we need, you know, a very good envi uh, environment, uh, isolation from the environment to, to carry this out. And we need precision operations. So we're, we're not completely there yet, but this is kind of, we're approaching that kind of system. So anyway, the examples I'll give were for uh, how we use these states in quantum uh, atomic clocks and then give some, a little bit of, ideas how it works for quantum computers. And certainly there's many, uh, any uh, groups around the world working on this. So I, I'm gonna be talking about experiments that use atomic ions as quantum bits. And uh, there's actually about 100 groups around the world that are maybe not trying to make big, large scale quantum computers that are, are, are investigating the elements of the operations we need. A little bit more history. So. Peter Short came up with his algorithm in, in 1994. And uh, in, in atomic physics, there's a famous meeting of so-called the International Conference on Atomic Physics, and it was held in Boulder, Colorado. And I was the, I was the uh, one, uh, co organizer of the meeting that year. And we, we invited a, 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 a quantum a theorist, a quantum theorist, Arthur Eckert, uh, to the meeting, and he was uh, familiar with the ideas of, of uh, Peter Schur, so we invited him to give us a talk on this, these, these new ideas, which were, which were really new to atomic physics people, actually all physicists. They got the basic ideas. I mean, they were, uh, 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 these two people, Ignacio Sirac and Peter Zoller, they're, they're, uh, they're theorists in atomic physics, but uh, what they also one of their real strengths as well is that they know what experiments can and can't do, 
and they were well aware of the capabilities of ex experiments with trapped ions, and, but then, and they were devised a scheme for carrying out these general operations. And so this is a very small scale uh, quantum computer just comprised of, of five quantum bits. So you, and along the, and the, and the, on the left side of the screen, you see this four rod structure uh, and it acts on our atomic ions, which in this case there's five that are represented by the, the uh, blue circles. And, uh, but, uh, so basically, you know, <laughs> the traps are another interesting ha thing how we can act on the particles. But what you want to think about is uh, a th the, the traps can provide a three-dimensional harmonic well for our ions. And so uh, uh, we, we actually make the, 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 uh, the, 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 the well, the, this uh, well for the ions in the, and, and the direction transverse to the axis of the, you see of those five ions. We make that force very, that confinement very strong. And, we, the, the, and along the axis, there's still a harmonic well, but the Coulomb repulsion of the, of the individual ions holds them apart. So they're in a regular array uh, with, that, I, that I show uh, in the cartoon there. So basically, the, 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 the ideas of the, uh, how the gates work is we'll have, in general, say during, the, uh, and up, during our, quant our computation, the, the, the internal state will be in a, uh, in a superposition state, what I've talked about before. Uh, and I show that on the, on the lower left there. Uh, and also, we can, it turns out we, uh, we, we have to worry about the motional modes of of this pseudo molecule, and so what? Well, for one of those modes, we uh, over on the uh, on the lower right there, we can we, we can quantize the harmon uh, pardon me, the quantum levels of this particular mode. The simplest one to think about is where the, these five ions are in this external potential and able to oscillate back and forth. So one of the key <coughs> elements of this is I won't <laughs> say too much about it now, but we need to actually cool down this motion and the techniques of laser cooling that we, we talk about, we can, we can actually cool to the, the ground, absolute ground state of this, of, this, of this quantum motion. And we can do it for all the, all the motional modes. And so that, that's good for <coughs> a good initial state <coughs> for our quantum system. So, and then, and then in general on the lower left, each one of those the blue dots there is gonna, the, in general, the, the, the qubit will be in a, some superposition of the zero and one states. The basic idea of their, of their scheme is the following. So we'll hit in from this five qubit example. The first step is to cool all, all ions to the motional ground state. And so we've, for each mode we've, on the lower right there, you see we've put all the, I, I, all the modes into the M equals zero state, ideally. Um, and then what we can do is we can actually uh, we'll go through the details here. But the the the, the superposition uh, that we, uh, that we existed in the in the state in this qubit on the lower left, we can actually map that superposition onto a one of the emotional modes. And so we map we map that superposition into a superposition of m equal zero and m equal one motion states. And so if we think about this center mass mode, we're all oscillating back to force together. What, what's nice about that is then the, that that motional mode is seen by all the, the all, all of the ions in our register. And then the, the second step is to be able to 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 uh, actually uh, map the uh, uh, rather uh, do a map. <laughs> pardon me. We 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 want to perform a, a quantum gate between the the atomic state uh, of that selected bit and the the motional this motional mode superposition that we've created, and by doing that we 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 basically created a, 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 a an operation between the first selected qubit and the second qubit the uh, a, 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 the quantum gates that I briefly described before. So anyway, this, uh, there's a little bit more details here. So we want to, we, we, in these experiments, we, the, a simple case of making quantum bits is where we, we choose the, 
uh, the, uh, the, the two states of the ion, the energy of the two states for the qubits, that we, we consider the case where there's a separated an energy at an optical frequency. Uh, and so what I, what, I, what I trying to show there in the lower, on the lower right is this is so for a particular selected qubit, the, the second one on my five ion example, in general, the, after that first operation, the mapping operation, the, the, the system will be in a superposition of the, pardon me, of, our, of the second qubit uh, that be, between the two states that I show with the cross-hatched uh, circles. And uh, so basically we've, uh, we've we mapped the qubit of the first, uh, uh, internal qubit of the, of the qubit on the right into this motional mode qubit. And then the, the idea is we want to do a quantum gate between that motional mode qubit, which is shared by all ions, and this second qubit, the second one from the, from the right there. And it, it turns out that, well, anyway, what we can do is we can coherently drive a transition uh, between th that spin up one state. And it turns out that, that, that what that does is creates a minus sign in front of the, in front of that state where the spin up and, and, the, and the one state. And that's ac exactly the operation that we wanted for our our basic quantum logic gate. Uh, and I think um, if it helps, maybe, maybe some of the students know that a, a spin one half an electron, if you actually rotate it by 360 degrees, you'd think it was a, it, that nothing happened, but in fact, the wave function of the electron picks up the minus sign, which is what we need, and that's the, essentially the minus sign we needed for this quantum logic shown on the, on the, on the far right. My, colleague uh, at, in the mid-90s was Christian Rowe, who went to Michigan and, and now is at, at Duke, uh, and then to actually to University of Maryland, and then now is at Duke University. Anyway, but in the early 90s, we were playing with these basic operations. Not, we didn't know anything about quantum computers, but, but not, long, not long after uh, that, that meeting, I said, where the, the Serac and Zoller revealed their basic idea they were nice enough to send us a preprint uh, of their paper, and 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 literally within two months we were able to demonstrate the this basic logic gate, uh, and and uh, so anyway that you know that was just the one little first piece that we needed to do, and we're still trying to now string these things together to do something interesting. So anyway, just and a little side note, we we all we did was we demonstrated this this particular operation on the, uh, shown on the lower left there where we, we cycle the ion, uh, you know, basically going from one, step, uh, one state to another and then back up to the original state. So that's the gate we were able to do. But our, but our colleagues in, in Innsbruck were able to carry out the basic, uh, the complete gate. And the reason we, it, reason we I mean, it was, that was a nice achievement, but it turns out there's, there's other uh, ways to do the logic gates that aren't aren't sensitive to, to, to residual motion. And so we, we, we went on to do those kind of logic gates. But anyway, so this is now, this is a, about the heaviest I will get into mathematics. And so hopefully the students will get an idea here that what we're doing is uh, basically for two ions, we can, we can, the, that our, we can, our optical qubit, we can, if we have two optical qubits, we, we can again represent those as the down and up arrows, the spin down and spin up. And then we have for a particular n quantum levels, it turns out we can drive uh, two photon stimulated Raman transitions. So these two, these two chain, uh, pathways of these two arrows, it, it's two ways to create the upper state, the up, up, n state from the down, down, n state. And the reason that, the reason we can do that is there's interferences in the, in the quantum pathways of, of these two with the two pathways that I, that I show on the on the diagram here, uh, so and well, I, this is a detail we we may have shown. And, and we we can do it with optical qubits, but there and another thing we do it with uh, qubits that are just separated by very small energies in the in the optical uh, ground state. But and that's too much here. The, the scheme that we followed is was outlined first by these theorists that were I underlined there and we were able to
to carry out this logic gate. And uh, again, a little more, a little more physics here is that in, when, when, when we talk about photons in a cavity, uh, we can talk about harmonic oscillators. And, and the, for a particular mode in a cavity, it's a, it's that we can represent the, the, wave, the wave function in phase space. So you can think of it a, as a classical harmonic oscillator where the, we represent the position and the mo momentum uh, on, in, a, in this diagram on the upper left. And, and when, we, when we consider how the, the state, this oscillating state evolves is basically that blob that I show you there, it, it goes around in a circle about the axis of the system. If we can, you know, independent of the kind of path, we tend to think about a circular path, but for, we, can, we can basically think of this path as being done in small steps and we can concatenate the steps uh, to, to uh, realize the situation where, uh, well, anyway, where the, we, we make a closed path in phase space and we adjust things so that the phase that this picks up is, uh, for example, minus one or some interesting uh, simple phase that we pick up on the, on the states that we're driving. And we can, so we can make, anyway, the, we can make this logic eight that I, that I described before between our two spin states. Uh, so anyway, for, for uh, w one way we can do this is with uh, optical dipole forces, uh, and, and, uh, which I haven't really described, but the basic idea is that we suppose we have just a single line in a trap. And the basic idea is we, we can, uh, we, we use the, we, we use the, we detune the lasers, uh, which gives a force on the, Turns out it gives a force on the on our ion qubits, and we can use that so-called Stark shift force to push the ions in a circle. And the way we do that is we interfere two laser beams, and it, it basically when we hear these interfere these beams, uh, they it, at the center of where they cross, it actually makes a standing wave, much like you know water waves. If there were two separate water waves coming in at the at an angle, they would create a standing wave where they cross. Anyway, we can use this, the, the, the force from the standing wave to push the ions uh, around in a circle to make our phase gate. And that's what I show here. Uh, we, for the simplest case, we want to initialize the motion to the ground state. And then in, the, in a frame that rotates with the, with the motion of the, of the ions, we can push the ions around in this circle, which I, I show on the, on the bottom right there. And, and we, we adjust things so that we pick up exactly this minus sign on the, on the state that we, uh, that for our quantum bits. Uh, anyway, I won't, I won't maybe, maybe this is too much, but I, uh, anyway, so what we want to think about is we set up this interference of two laser beams and what it does, it creates a, a force which is, has an oscillating structure, and we can, ch we can make the frequencies of the two lasers being the same, and what happens uh, is that this, 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 uh, this force, this modulated force, it, it moves, say, to the right, and if we uh, adjust our laser frequencies in a certain way. So it turns out that we can adjust it so that uh, for when the two states are different, uh, the, the ions will experience a, 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 a force which pushes the two ions in the opposite directions. Uh, and if we, on the other hand, and, and it'll excite that this uh, vibrational mode. On the other hand, if the ions are in the, in the same state, they feel a common force, but not a force that tends to drive this, uh, this, uh, this, this, uh, this mode of motion where the ions are in opposition. Anyway, that's, I know it's a little bit heavy for here, but. Uh, anyway, we can realize that this phase gate uh, up and up to overall phase shifts, which we can easily correct for. Uh, and I won't go into that. There's a lot of interest in what these kind of gates simulate other systems. I'll say a, bit, a little bit more of that about that in a little bit. And uh, it turns out that anyway, we, we we to achieve accuracy, we want as these waves sweep across the ion, we want we we want them to be to feel fairly uniform. Uh, force, and what that means is the size of the wave functions of the ions are represented by the size of the blue dots. There, we need to make that 
the, the diameter of the of the uh, of the of the of the qubit state or the state representing particular qubits. We want that to be small compared to the wavelength of the transition that we're sweeping off the uh, off across the ends. Anyway, this has some some names in the. Uh, so anyway, we, the, the, we can do this with either. Uh, the spins that are that are oriented along, say, the z-axis, or ones that are orient oriented along the x-axis, that gives us some more uh, uh, some more vertatility, and that's what I show in that indicate in that bottom reference. Uh, so, what about the performance? I, I won't I won't say uh, you know go into again the details, but with the gates that we outlined before, we were able to get to uh, uh, for optical transitions. Uh, get to conditions where we talk about fidelities, and the fidelity number just means that uh, for each operation, uh, we, we would like the, the fidelity to be equal to one. So basically, the fidelity is equal to one minus the error rate. So we either talk about fidelities or error rates. But anyway, we could uh, in in some of these experiments, we we really get down to fid fidelities uh, of about. Uh, it, uh, around uh, three nine, so an error of about 10, 10 to the minus three, and uh, we're now uh, we're now down to about an order of magnitude better, and this is sort of the nominal minimum uh, error we can uh, we can stand to, to scale up to do large comp computations. So we're we're getting close to where the, the error rates that we that we need to carry out more general large computations. Actually, what this this is a maybe an example only if physicists will understand. But the 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 we we, we they in our experiments we we related in, that I show on the bottom we got down to fidelities that were about three nine three nines and actually they are close to four nines and actually the the the, the authors of physical review letters they 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 sometimes have little pieces at the Front of the journal, explaining you know what certain articles are about. Anyway, they 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 nicely gave us another uh, order of magnitude of fidelity, which sounds really great if we could make <laughs> consistently gates with 99.999 uh, probability. I think we'd be in good shape for making a large-scale quantum computer. Well, we're not quite there yet. Hopefully, we're headed there. And the other thing to say is that one thing we we think about is. I showed the cartoon with just the five ions in a trap. The problem is if we try to scale up the system to hundreds of qubits, see, in principle, we could use the same picture. We have all 100 ions line up in a row, but the, uh, the, there, with 100 ions, there's 300 motional modes, and we just, the frequencies, we can't separate out the different frequencies of the modes well enough. To, so what we think about doing is it's shown in the cartoon here on the, on the lower right, I saw the, the, the two red uh, ions there are meant to represent our qubits. And so what we do is we can apply with this array, uh, you know, conceptualized array, we can apply electric fields to the ions to select uh, them off from different lo locations in this array and then push them into this processor region on the lower right. And, and then do our logic gate, so that so we just have to operate on two, two, uh, mo uh, two modes of motion in the axial direction. And the, the, the yellow ion I show there is that by moving the ions around, we we can do it fairly softly, but we tend to heat the ions. The ions tend to get heated by going around these quarters and so on. So the the, the yellow ion ours we stick in there uh, to just to cool the ion motion down. So it, it's a different ion. It does when we do op operations on it. It doesn't affect the qubit ions, but we can do laser cooling on that ion to f to, to have the start out the qubit the the the, the two qubit gate of, represented by the two red ions. We can start it out in the ground state, which is what we want to achieve high accuracy in the gates. Uh, okay, so that's what, that's what I just said. We have an extra beam and a different kind of ion to cool the ions down before these logic operations. So to, to scale up, uh, we, we, one thing we, we think of going to maybe a simpler geometry, and some of the early ideas we played up is we can, we can rather than have this three-dimensional idealized uh, structure, 
shown in the upper left, we can actually make it in, out of two planar electrodes in this scheme on the upper right, which we send, sandwich these two wafers uh, together with a spacer that's not shown here. But anyway, that mimics the, the same, uh, the, uh, along the axis of the system, it, it mimics the same, the idealized structure I show in the upper left. And these are just some pictures of some, some devices we make it along the lines of what's in the upper right. Uh, and uh, anyway, this you know to get to very large numbers, we we have to we have to enlist the professionals that are able to mic microfabricate these arrays. And so these are some one of the labs that that has been doing that is is Sandia National Labs. And this just shows some pictures of the of the ion arrays they can create. And so the the one up here on the upper left is actually just very similar to the one I showed in the cartoon, but it's just got many more uh, regions, where, regions along the axis where we can store the ions. Uh, okay, so well, this is uh, another little detail. And I showed that uh, in the earlier pictures that so the, our ion trap being in the you know, three-dimensional uh, uh, structure, we can actually distort the, the, uh, the electrodes into a plane uh, and we still get the same trapping potential, the center of which is represented by the, the cross there. Uh, and these are just some examples of this planar structure that we, we you know, we first made. And uh, there's very just, there were simple one dimensional, uh, or single, single trapping states. But anyway, this, the nice thing about this planar structure is it's easy to scale up to very large arrays. So here's, Here's one we made, uh, where the each each little square you see the the, the 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 oval there, but each around the oval each there's each broken in a bunch of squares, and each one of those squares we can have represent as a we can make be a location where you hold hold ions, and then we actually off to the side there we can see kind of like a railroad station where we can have side tracks where we can put the ions in order to shift their orientation and so on, shift their, 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 their alignment and so on. Anyway, so this, is, this was just a first step in this direction. And, but, I, but I would say this is kind of the, now that, that quant, there are quantum computer country, uh, companies uh, trying to, to exercise these things in order to scale up their using similar to geometries, which, which I show in this picture here. Uh, Anyway, uh, yeah. So there's, anyway, this, this is a this is a recent re uh, 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 report by one of the commercial companies trying to make quantum computers with ions, and uh, anyway, they they were able to build this into their as they try to scale up their uh, processor that, that they hope to make commercial. They they're using the same idea for scaling up. I won't I, I won't go into this here. <laughs> Probably too heavy a detail. We have other ways. I showed how we could, uh, in in the cartoon, I showed where we bring two ions together to do a quantum gate, and we can actually do a quantum gate. Uh, we can entangle ions by uh, uh, by uh, by actually uh, having having uh, the the two in this case ytterbium ions on the left. We can have them emit a a, a, a spun spontaneous emit uh, 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 photons, and then we interfere them on the structure on the right, and we can actually, we can actually uh, prepare uh, uh, the, the ions in states that are relevant for the quantum gates. Uh, and then we can, well, I won't, we can teleport the qubit states in, uh, but anyway, the basic idea is we want to be able to, you know, the trick now is to be able to scale up to make processors and now people are talking about quantum networks and that are actually already starting to be realized but based on these kind of schemes so anyway the other thing i, I won't I haven't got time to talk about but that what's been interesting uh, okay from the physics side is uh is is that we can we can simulate at least we're aiming towards having a very large number of ions in the trap and simulating other quantum systems for example electrons in the in a solid that, 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 you know, many, many electrons where they form certain states. So anyway, this just lists some, uh, some of the people doing, simulating those systems. 
And uh, anyway, so uh, this is a list, just a little, this list a little out of date. This is all, a, this is all ion groups. And in fact, uh, at, this was two or three years ago, the list that I prepared, but, and, and I mentioned this on, on Reiner Blot's website in Innsbruck. He has, he has, a, he has a, a list of references. It's over a hundred now groups just doing a t trapped ions to try to, to, to you know, perfect the elements of quantum uh, computing using ions. And there's many other platforms that went, uh, to do this. One, uh, one that's very popular and has a lot of, it, 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 you know, uh, certainly you know, very, gets very good results and it's not clear which will be the same, but the most popular one, I, I mentioned several different platforms. The one that's probably the most studied is Joseph's Injunctions, which anyway, it's a qubit made out of solid state system. And it can be, this is all can be, you know, done, uh, assembled with printed, uh, you know, printed structures on, on surfaces. Anyway, that's another whole subject. Anyway, what I wanted to say is we can actually make, uh, we can make a, a superposition state on a, which is an equal superposition of all zeros and ones that change from spin up and spin down again, but the zeros and ones represents two uh, energy states. And in fact, they could represent uh, states of, of say, of, of a, of a, of a electron or, or a atomic spin that has a magnetic moment. And we, if we could make this state that I've shown up above, we could separate off the first qubit uh, and put it in one, one electro, uh, uh, in one spot, and then we could separate all the others off into another spot. And so we basically have a, in this uh, this equal superposition. Uh, of say the, the zero of the first qubit being uh, uh, coupled uh, associated with the with the other all the other spins, and we could talk about uh, macroscopic magnetization. We can separate them into two places, and so actually we although it's it's a bit of a, a it's a bit of a cheat. We'd say this is very much like the the Schrodinger's cat, maybe a more humane version. But the idea here is we're able to we're able to entangle a single atomic particle with a much more macroscopic uh, superposition in this case, which gives us kind of a, a small magnet, magnet inside the trap. And in principle, we could measure that with a classical meter, which is very much like in Schrodinger's example, looking to see whether the cat is dead or alive. Well, anyway, that, I mean, it, I think it does actually illustrate the, the basic ideas of Schrodinger's cat, um, but we're quite a way it's away from making a, where we can measure one of the systems being a macroscopic magnetization, for example. Anyway, so uh, that, that, just very briefly summarize. I mean, the uh, uh, you know we need we need to do everything better before getting very far. The second item there, uh, so we can think about making this factoring machine. And I mentioned that a lot of the ideas were pursuing it can be applied to simulating other systems, quantum systems, with us. and uh, what, I, what, I, what, I, what I what I what I want to say here is that there's you know, there, there's a lot of commercial systems going on uh, are established now, and you know it's not clear at all uh, who will be the winner or whether there'll really be a winner. That, but I I think we're all optimistic that we still got ways to go, but uh, we can get there eventually. I know I'm running out of time. So we, we have a way to use this in our atomic clocks, but I don't have time to talk about that. What we can measure the states of atomic clocks using these same basic principles of a, a quantum computer. Uh, but again, I, I won't go there. But anyway, just to say in general with a, our experiments on atomic clocks and quantum computers, the, the work is done by many students and, and postdocs and, and uh, and visitors from other labs around the world. So the, in this picture, uh, which is taken uh, just, uh, uh, just before I left uh, NIST to come to University of Oregon, it shows the people involved. And of course, these are the people really doing all the, the, the work in, in the lab to carry out these things. So it relies on a lot of people. And I must say at NIST, we were lucky to, uh, during when, the time when most of these experiments sent uh, the head of uh, of the physical physics lab at, at, at NIST was Catherine Gebbe. And uh, she, she's well, well known for she, her stated opinion of how to fund 
people, you know, scientists just to find good people, give them money and let them go. And so, so luckily we were on her good people list and so we got a lot of support from her. And we also got support from agent, agencies other outside, particularly because of our interest in clocks and quantum computing. So some of the military agencies also funded us. And with that, thanks for listening and good luck to the students in the audience. Yeah. Thank you.